Well, Israel is weighing up its response to Iran's airstrikes over the weekend. In a break from usual support for Israel, the US says it will not participate in any retaliatory attacks on Iran. Joining me now is the US correspondent and analyst, Michael Ware. Michael, great to see you. You know this part of the world almost better than anyone I know. So there's always a bit of reading between the lines here. Iran launched this drone strike, which was quite slow uh, and gave America and Israel's allies forewarning. What do you think the intention was here? Well, as I say, all war is a conversation. <clears throat> so this, like other kinds of attacks, is a, it's a form of messaging, you know, as breathtaking and unprecedented and as historic this attack was. It's the first time ever Iran has launched weapons from Iranian soil onto Israeli soil. Despite that fact, as you highlight quite rightly, Iran has been relatively restrained about it. Because, yes, they did warn the Iraqi government and they did warn the Turkish government in the expectation that they would then warn the Americans that Iran was not targeting, this attack is coming, but we're not targeting US interests. And that's incredibly surprising. Mm. Now, the other factor you talked about is the relatively slow moving drones. Let's not forget, there were over 300 munitions fired. Many of them were drones, but that was the first wave because they were fired in waves. Don't forget, they also use then second and third waves of ballistic and cruise missiles. And perhaps because of their restraint, and, and that gives the Israeli a fair bit of time to see all these munitions incoming because they had to travel quite some distance. So, again, perhaps another sign of the restraint or a sign of the limitation that Iran has on directly attacking Israel from Iran. But, yeah, this is clearly part of the much broader conversation about the balance of power in the Middle East. It's always been the case with Israel, the, the backbone of its national defence, whether it was 67 or 73 or any other time, if you punch us we're going to come back and punch you twice as hard. And that has always been the deterrence factor that Israel has relied upon. Well, even as the missiles were in the air, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps was already saying, this is the end of this operation. We're not firing anymore. But consider this a new equation. If you hit us, referring to the... Mm the strike in, in Syria against the Iranian consulate that everyone attributes to the Israelis, if you hit us, we'll hit you back. So the Iranians are trying to flip that balance of military power. I don't know if it's going to work. And we've all been holding our breath to see whether this is going to com conflagrate. But in the yeah. last half hour or so, I've been able to start to breathe because the Israeli government has just announced they're reopening schools. So that indicates two things, that mm -hmm. Israel doesn't intend to immediately retaliate and therefore they're not expecting any immediate response. Uh, right, yeah, that's a, that is certainly a good sign. I want to ask you more broadly about Israel's uh, response as well, because usually, you know, there's, there's this proxy war that goes on and Israel can direct their anger, um, you know, at the proxies more directly as to not uh, escalate the war, uh, at least war of words, with Iran. But I guess we wait to see what Benjamin Netanyahu says, because there has been some indication from those in the Israeli cabinet that they see this now. There is a, you know, a de declaration that this is, you know, not a war against the proxies. They have Iran in their sights. 